Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to discuss, uh, this is for the new COs going into the county correction system. The first 48 hours in jail, uh, what to expect uh, either as a CO if you're taking care of the inmates or as a inmate if you um, are potentially looking at some jail time. The first 48 hours, and this is assuming this is not a like a commitment or uh, some other like work release type situation. This is for somebody coming off the street directly into a holding uh, cell. So when a peace officer uh, arrests somebody on the street, they'll be transported to a county correction system. And basically the officer will bring them through a series of gates. The gate uh, in front of the jail is typically known as a sally port. A big roll up door will open and then the officer will drive through, park, the door will close. And now whether the person remains combative or not is up to them. Sometimes people freak out when they actually enter jail because the realization that they're gonna be spending some time here actually hits them, especially if they know they're not going to be able to bond out. Uh, and first time offenders, if they're career criminals, it's just another day in what they've chosen to do or what they're facing, right? So the officer will park. There will be a series of designated spots. Sometimes there's multiple officers at the same time bringing people and basically it's just a line. They're just queuing for uh, correction staff to get to the inmates so they can go on about their day, write their report, et cetera. So the correction staff is gonna go to the car, interact with the person, uh, assuming they're not combative. Hey, look, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. Correction staff may hold on to the person so they don't fall down. And then they'll enter through what's known as a gun gate. The door will shut behind them. It's usually a sliding door. And that's where the person's going to be searched. And a lot of people have not worked in this environment or been to jail. Don't realize it's not like Shawshank. You're not going to be strip searched. Um, it is a full pat down search. Your, some clothing is going to remove from you uh, any strings, shoelaces, um, shoes, those type of things. You will have your pockets gone through. Uh, the person will do a complete uh, hands-on search. They're going to ask you if you have any knives, weapons, guns on you, anything that's going to poke me, stick me, hurt me, any narcotics, anything illegal on you. Those are all typical questions to ask him before you begin your search so you don't get hurt yourself. The COs are gonna have gloves on. And then there'll probably be at least two COs there in case the person becomes combative. If it's a known person who has a known history, there could be more of the person's being actively combative, absolutely more people. Uh, and that's just to control the situation before it gets out of hand. So the person will be, once the search is completed and they've bagged everything up and they're not gonna take that, they're gonna take that, those items physically from you, but they still remain yours. They're gonna be cataloged and you're gonna sign for that property sheet in a, a few minutes. Um, it could, it, depending on how busy the jail is, you could get into the processing portion immediately, assuming you're not intoxicated and you're, uh, well-behaved, you know, if they don't perceive a threat from you, should be fairly quick. So they're gonna sit you uh, down on some benches. Hey, look, go ahead and hang out here for me. Um, they're gonna be respectful. That being said, don't get up on your own. Um, don't go start walk around on your own. It is jail after all, if you see a, a series of pay phones, Sometimes uh, newer holding facilities won't look like the picture in back of me. It will actually be benches that are out in the open. You're not allowed to just walk around the holding area, even if there are open benches and you're not behind a jail cell. 
So before you do anything, hey, look, can I get a drink of water? Um, can I make a phone call? Whatever, make sure you let the correction staff, your intentions, uh, particularly if you're not in the cell, right? In the cell, obviously once the door shuts and you're out in there, you can walk around, but if you're out in the open, don't get up until told to do so. So you can expect to spend about 48 hours in a holding cell. And what that means is you will have a toilet, you will have water available to you, you'll be given your meals, you'll have the opportunity to make a phone call. Um, all those things are pretty standard, but what you won't get is your toiletries if you go to general population. Um, or even segregation, if you go to population, whatever it may be, uh, whatever your classification takes you, or if you had disciplinary issues when coming in, et cetera. But you're not gonna have a mattress, you're not gonna have a blanket, you're not gonna have a mattress cover, you're not gonna have a plastic cup, toothbrush, those types of items that you'd normally get in population the first 48 hours of you being in jail. You're also not going to have a shower unless you obviously defecated on yourself or threw up on yourself when the COs process you, assuming you remain calm, they will give you the opportunity to shower and possibly they will change you out into a inmate uniform if your clothes are soiled and they'll, they'll have them washed. So you've been kind of taken to the bench there, there's a couple of things that need to be done. Your property needs to be inventoried. Your picture needs to be taken. And fingerprints. We call it a live scan. So that may be out in the open. Um, some jails have a separate room for that. Others will just have a section of the holding area that uh, will be for processing live scan photos and this all needs to be done before you can see the magistrate so you've had you've signed for your property if there's any discrepancies in the property that's when it needs to be hey look where's my id card where's my whatever it may be right um peace officers may seize your items as evidence and really, if it doesn't come into jail with you, you need to uh, let that be known then. So you've had your fingerprints taken, picture taken, and inventory gone through. And you're gonna sign veteran status, your inventory, there's gonna be a whole slew of documents you're gonna, you're gonna sign. So then you're gonna be put into the cell uh, basically, or brought back and forth between the cell, something that looks like behind me, that is a holding facility. And be behind that half wall right there, the toilet and uh, sink. And you'll be provided with toilet paper. Uh, a lot of inmates will use it as pillows. Keep in mind, it's up to the inmates to, and COs will, tell the inmates who are sleeping on the pillows to, hey man, you gotta give it up, you know, give it, he wants some toilet paper. Now there's other types of cells that are pretty dependent on the condition you come in, like detox will be a cell like this one, but probably smaller and meant for uh, those who are so intoxicated that they can't go into the, people, the other people who are not intoxicated and they just came in as well. So general holding, and then you have detox to let the people kind of sleep it off. And if they're having any issues, they're not gonna cause issues and potentially get hurt by the people who are sober. And you have what's known as a VC cell. And VC cell stands for violent cell. It's where people who are actively combative they're not gonna put you in there because you're strange. It's because of two reasons. One, you're actively suicidal or 
you're actively combative against staph. And those type of cells, and maybe I'll do another video on a VC cell. It's not a place you really want to spend any time. There's a camera up top, there's padded walls, and there's a basically a hole in the middle for water to drain, that's it. Uh, you're gonna request water through a food port. They're gonna give you a paper cup, you're gonna drink it and you're gonna give it right back. So nobody wants to spend any time in the VC cell. It's not a place to go. Uh, it's not a good idea to misbehave at any point in jail, just because there's, there's consequences to that. I mean, if you try to assault staff, et cetera, um, you're not gonna win. That's just the bottom line. After you've been processed, fingerprints, uh, photo, et cetera, your paperwork's done. They're gonna put you in a holding cell. You're gonna probably, let's say you came in around 8 p.m. Well, the magistrate in most cases doesn't come in until morning. So you're gonna sit in the holding cell. Probably for till morning. And then most likely you will be magistrated and then you will go to population assuming they don't, uh, you don't bond out later in the afternoon. We've talked about the magistration process and the magistration process is basically where they're gonna give you, they're gonna read you your rights, they're gonna give you bail, they're gonna review the paperwork, not with you, but they're gonna review the paperwork uh, from the peace officer to make sure they have the PC probable cause affidavit uh, describing the reason for the stop, why they had reasonable suspicion, why they had probable cause to make the arrest, et cetera. You could be in holding for up to 48 hours before you hit housing. And that means, hey, look, you're not gonna have a shower for 48 hours. You're gonna have food, water. I mean, you're roughing it a little bit, okay? Do you have any questions in regards to the holding process and what's included in a holding cell, let me know. I'll try to answer those questions. Hopefully this kind of explains a little bit about what you can experience in the first 48 hours. One thing we didn't go over is sometimes there's a difference in the holding area versus what they're served in terms of food. It can be anywhere between, hey, look, you're gonna get a cookie a carton of milk and a bologna sandwich to you're gonna get a full jail tray. And different jails have different quality of food. Uh, I've seen everything from like Maricopa County where in Arizona, or this is on the TV, so I've never been there in person. I've never tried it, but it was, uh, they may refer to it as slop. Um, you know, breakfast, you may get uh, two sandwiches and that will be expected to last you for breakfast and lunch. And then you'll get a hot slop uh, during dinner. Now, that's in a more pretty conservative approach in terms of what they're providing. And other places you'll get a full tray. And it may be turkey meat and bread. Uh, in the facility that I worked at, you didn't have any type of pork. Uh, the only thing we served was turkey in terms of meat. So um, turkey ham is what we called it, would be like, it looked like ham slices. It even smelled like ham slices, but it was turkey. So those are just things to keep in mind. Every facility will be different at least, at least as long as it meets a nutritional standard. And there is a nutritionist that reviews the diet uh, menu. I believe it's on an annual basis. So there's not a whole lot in terms of taste there. It will, will keep you from being hungry. That's about the best way to describe it. I've had uh, jail trays. Uh, jail staff is typically required to try it. Uh, usually the supervisor will come and try one meal a day and it's, it's edible guys. Um, a lot of people don't like it after a long period of time because the menu, while it does change throughout the week, it always repeats. So 
you know, the food in jail is what it is. It tastes like jail food. I mean, it's nothing special, but it's not gross either. So at least that's my, that was my experience at the facility I worked at. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, respond.